Hey, Jelani. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. What what a what a shock for the football world last week. I know you guys are on on to Seattle and on to this week, but um, what a what an effort for you guys last week. How great was it to win that first game for your new head coach? Oh, it was great. It was a big milestone for for Mayo and for us as an organization, and hopefully we can build on that uh, um, this upcoming week. Jelani, one thing you talked about before the game is the defense and how you guys wanted – you go into it with the mindset you're going to carry this team – uh, every single week, you guys had another amazing job creating turnovers, making Joe Burrow uncomfortable back there. Um, how do you continue to build off of that going against the Seattle team and where you know they like to run the football and Geno Smith is a solid quarterback when it comes to you know trying to make the right decisions? Um, well, the, it starts with our preparation. You know, It starts on, on Wednesday. Um, on our early downs and, and it carries on each and every day that we go uh, into this week. But that mindset never never changes for us. You know, our, our, our biggest thing is always to be tough football players, to, to know that if, if a team wants to run the ball, we better be able to stop it and, and make them one-dimensional and, and you know, put, put their quarterback in situations where they're questioning what, what coverage we're running or, you know, give them different looks so that, uh, you know, they might make that mistake of throwing it into a trap corner or whatever it is, you know. So um, it's on us to, you know, see what they're doing on offense. That way we can make an adjustment and uh, and capitalize on any mistakes that they make in the game. Jelani, when it comes to preparing for week two, Kenneth Walker was uh, a star for Seattle in week one. He hasn't practiced back-to-back -back days the last two days. Uh, I'm sure you're preparing as if he is going to be playing this week, but there is a chance that he's not. So how much does that change uh, the way in which you guys see Seattle in week two? Um, it doesn't change. Like you said, we're, we're practicing as if he is playing. And if he doesn't, then he doesn't. But for the time being, we're going to make sure that um, we're, we're we're dialed in and focused on making sure that we we stop uh, we stop him this week because, like you said, he is a big threat and he is a, a big part of their their offense and um, so um, it's just a, another opportunity and challenge that we're really excited for. Um, and if he does get to play, wonderful. If he doesn't, wonderful. Like uh, nothing changes for how we're going to approach the game. So. Like I said, we're just going to be excited and, and ready for uh, Sunday. Jelani, one of the things that Gerard Mayo talked to us about is he said that, you know, guys are going to hear the noise outside of the locker room, whether it's, you know, us in the media predicting how many wins you're going to get, how good your football team's going to be. Um, you guys hear that. How much does that fuel you when you hear the negativity about, you know, what, you know, some of us might view the expectations of this team. What what does that do for you guys inside that locker room as far as fueling you to maybe prove a lot of us wrong? Um, I, one, I, I didn't even know about how uh, everyone had uh, Cincinnati over us, so I didn't really have a reaction on that until after the game when everybody started telling me that. And then two, um, I don't know, it's we we all we all have that underdog mindset, you know. We're, we we we're we're okay with being underdogs uh, because you know we're <laughs> we're we're going to be the same team every like week in week out and make sure and we're going to make sure that every team understands and feels you know our our um, aggression and our our um, our tough football. So um, for the younger guys who are listening to the noise, I hope that they can lean to a, a vet and. Um, you know, not look at those distractions and just focus on their play and perfecting their craft. And for the older guys, um, I think I think we've been in this organization long enough to know that we, we don't need to hear or listen to any of uh, other people's opinions other than our teammates, our coaches, and ourselves. So um, I, think, I think we have really good guys in here to make sure that we don't listen to the noise. We've all heard that some of your teammates during the fourth quarter of that game Sunday started chanting, take them to the hill on the sidelines. That's one of those things that, you know, at some point, maybe week eight, nine, ten, whatever, could be a little corny. But I, is that, uh, Gerard Mayo said yesterday that the, 
that was an attempt during training camp to create adversity for the team. And is is that kind of the way you guys feel about that from a? From, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But it also just goes back back to you know tough football. You know, a lot of teams don't condition. A lot of teams don't do this and that, whatever. And I feel like a lot of teams aren't practicing the way that we do over here in New England. So when we when we you know quote unquote take them to the hill, we're we're we want to make sure that like we want to show them like our tough football and how conditioned we are, even even if it's late in the game. So um, yeah, we said it perfectly at the end. Jelani, the the end of that game. It seemed like the players took personal the questioning over the new head coach and Gerard Mayo. What what did that Gatorade bath and what did that win mean for you guys in playing for him? No, it was, it was everything. You know, um, getting the first win as a new head coach is always a tough, is one of the toughest things. So it was good that it was it was awesome to you know, get him that first win, especially especially coming from uh, his linebacker room. I, think, I know it was a special moment. Um, you know, it, it's our job as players to make, make him look good. So we're going to do our best to continue that uh, continue that each and every week. I don't know if you saw the game last night and what happened to Tua, but um, is there, from a player perspective, um, when you're some when you see somebody who has – uh, suffered the way he has concussion wise. You see what happened last night again. Um, is there is there a concern player wise when it comes to these Thursday night games and and short rest? I mean, it is what it is. You can't. It's going to be hard to you know coming into the NFL to change those kind of primetime things. So I mean, it's just the the game we play. But in Tua's case, I just hope that you know he recovers and and I just I pray that he's okay because he's a really good guy and um definitely got to uh bond with him in, over the past off season so um I got nothing but love and respect for that guy just hopefully you know you know things uh turn out better for him but yeah I don't I don't really care what day we play I just it's just another day for me to get get into the office and have fun if you had gone through what he went through uh, before and and last night, w- would you keep playing? Uh, you know, that's just a decision I gotta sit down and have with my like with myself and my family. Um, it's hard. It's hard to walk away from the game that you've been playing your whole life. You know, so um, I don't know. It's, it's hard to put myself in that spot right now. Yeah, Jelani, last one for me. I know you're a West Coast guy. Um, I'm guessing it seems like you're a big student of the game and you love the football game. Our resident PFF Shime here, Chris Shime, said that a guy like Joe Montana could not play in today's era of football. <laughs> and we have the discussion, could guys play in, you know, the older era and some of those guys play in this era? Yeah. I believe he went so far as to say that you, Jelani Tavai, were tougher than Brian Urlach. Yes. Uh, no, I, to correct the record, I said I, he could hit harder. Hit, hit harder, harder than Brian Urlach. Yep. Brian Urlach. I've, I've been hit by Brian Urlach. <laughs> Shy, my guy here. That'd be me. Uh, yeah. I've hit. I've been, oh, I thought you said Joe Montana said that. I said, what? No. <laughs> no I've, I've been hit by Brian Urlach, and never you, and I do not want to get hit by you. How do you feel when, when you hear people compare – some of the older players, could they play in today's era? Or some of you guys, could you play in, you know, the older era? Do you think that there are guys who could and can't play in either era? Um, you know, it's hard. I, uh, if we had the same rules back in the day, um, I would probably say no. But um, I think I think if you talk to an offensive player, they would say, yes, I could play in this time. If you talk to a defensive player, they'd probably say, I don't want to play in this era. Uh, because of the rules, but I don't. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's a little different. All right. Well, we'll mm-hmm. let you get to work and start getting ready for Sunday and an opportunity to <laughs> sure. op- opportunity to be back at home. And I'm sure you're looking forward to seeing the fans on on Sunday. Oh, 100. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good one.